Four minutes late. We're four minutes late. Oh my god. What the heck is happening? Current heart rate. Mm -hmm. Oh my current heart rate is. Yeah. We're 62 beats nine hours ago. Mm -hmm. Good job. Haley, what's going on? 82 right now. 82 mm -hmm. beats. 83. Oh crap, it's going up. Well, how's everybody doing? How's the oh hey, what's up? What's up? Ah, dudes, what's up? Howdy from Dallas. Ah, hey, what's up, Jason? Hope you had a great weekend. Hope everyone out there had a great weekend. What's up from Dallas? Sarasota in the house. Carlos Lopez. Hey, look at that. Long lost friend. Um, sorry we're four minutes late. Uh, we were just finishing up. Uh, well, we were actually working on another job. Didn't finish it up, of course. It's, uh, if you guys caught the Friday Saturday show, Saturday show, late, late Saturday. James, what's going on, buddy? Dude, you got. Hey, you gotta, Tony. You gotta follow James on uh, Tony from UK. UK yeah. What's up, Tony? Um, you gotta follow. You gotta friend James on uh, Facebook because he put up some uh, pictures this weekend from his little drive around. I follow his page on Facebook. Oh, did you follow him? Oh, uh, like his you page. See, you see his this like, uh, Yeah. That's some really beautiful pictures. Reminded me of Hawaii. What's up, Butch? Butch? Jason, Ben Crazy with Black Friday looming. We don't uh, do much for Black what's Friday. What's Eric? Um, but it has just been crazy because everyone's got this week off. So we had a bunch of, um, hey, hey. Um, we had a bunch of uh, work that was scheduled for this week. And there was that, Donnie? two really big jobs mm -hmm. from the same guy. Um, but we'll talk about that more next week. Uh, why don't you like Rockford Prime? Um, it's not that I don't like Rockford Prime, I'm just kind of burnt out on Rockford Prime. We sell a lot of it. Um, hold on. Camera's cricket. Alright. Um, I mean, they're okay for the price. They're okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I don't they do the whoa. job. Oh, oh my god! The ship is sailing. Um, Hello from Delaware. What's up, James? Alright, this Dina. one has a... There we go. Oh, is that better? Is that worse? That Fidel. looks good. It has. Chicago. Bang, bang. Wayne, what's going on, buddy? All right, I will use the little bubble on it to make it level. That's still as crooked as can be. How is that so bad? George from Oregon. Victor. Sorry for up? shaking. Yeah, there we go. Chris from Kansas City. Uh, no, okay, so how do the three... We're actually working on the three-way flax system right now. It's going in the car we're currently working on, so we, we're... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're working on it. So far, so good. It's a three-way system going in a Porsche. We'll talk about that more next week. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Mark say, guys, why are you so late? 2.35 a.m. in here in Germany. Because <laughs> uh, we were working on the flax system. and I uh, want to sleep. <laughs> actually, it's funny. It's a Porsche, so it's your fault. <laughs> it's a German's fault. It's a, it's a German's um, fault. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so we did that. We did the two um, doing a three flex system literally right now. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, I mean we we were at the install bay. I was like, oh my god, it's six fifteen. We ran here, set this thing up. That's yeah. why I had to adjust the camera. Um, we'll be working on it all day tomorrow. Uh, I'm excited. I can't wait. Well, like I said, we'll 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 talk more about that. This maybe it's Saturday show. Saturday show, um, yeah. But speaking of the Saturday show, so we did a really late Saturday show uh, right after we got back from the hockey game. It was Haley, uh, Haley's friend, Clarissa. What's up? And um, it was good for a while, and then the creeps came out, and then we had to we had to bow out. <laughs> vote for Nando. Thank you, Bill. And that brings it up. All you guys that wanted the vote for Nando shirt, it is up and going. Uh, you can link to it. It's on Teespring. If you go to Teespring slash store slash five star, you can find the vote for Nando t-shirt. On the back it has keep America, or uh, what does it say? Make a great game. Make, 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 yeah, jeez, I made the shirt and I never forgot what it said. Anyways, for those of you that want the cool Teespring five star winter hoodies, uh, we had a guy today send us a picture on Instagram. He got his today, so cool. make sure you grab those up. They are inexpensive. So the Fernan vote uh, vote for Fernando shirt is fourteen fifty there again. So it comes to you about twenty bucks ship. Hello from Greece. Greece, nice. But yes, it's uh, I believe it's vote for. I don't remember what the. But if you go to yeah. our store or if you go to Teespring slash Five Star Winter, you can click on the Five Star. 
you know, other stuff from Five Star. And there we have all the stuff that we put up. So we have the hoodies, we have the zipper jackets, we have a coffee mug, we even have something for babies. Uh, Who doesn't yeah. like stuff for babies? Richard from um, Seattle. And since I have the cool piece of paper, Get remember, dnftooldrawer.com. Yep. Well, that, yeah. There you can find <laughs> most of the tools that we use on our installs. Uh, some of them we haven't updated yet. Uh, I, I'm just amazed I got this up as far as I have. Mm -hmm. But if you need a tool or this holiday, you, you want to make that wish list for that, you know, you know, make the wish list for your favorite someone. Yeah. Not me, you. You get what I'm saying. Just point your loved ones here and tell them, I want this tool. Go to dnftooldrawer.com. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Don't forget Patreon. Oh yeah, Patreon. Thank you guys. We got a bunch of new Patreons this week. Uh, I appreciate. Awesome. Uh, Patreon subscribers go at the end of this video. We give you a cool thank you. Right now we're not doing much else than that. I mean, we'll hopefully have something one of these days. I mean, yeah. not, you know, but uh, you know, the t-shirts and the hoodies are what you guys really wanted. We wanted to get those out, and they are. I made them cheap. I mean, fourteen fifty. Uh, I don't remember what the hoodies like cheap too it's like 20 something yeah it's cheap so it's cheap. you know if you guys want to represent the five star instead of like we're got the cool amp and he's got the cool dei snake pit yeah five star five star baby there five star go. i haven't even ordered one yet i gotta i gotta order i gotta order some i gotta vote i gotta get us the vote for nando shirts yeah uh because i really like he the, made it and he don't have one no well i mean geez i just <laughs> made it sunday i mean i got up and i was uh i was i got up sunday and i was going through i had uh some some back work i had to do for right. for that account yeah. and then i was getting ready to order stuff for me for my car i was finally getting ready i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna order the stuff for my car and then this idea popped in my head and i was like Never mind. Never mind. I gotta. I gotta make this cool logo for the back. Hope you guys like the wing. You know, keep America great. Patriot. Um, yeah, yeah. So, hello from New York. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Your Islanders kicked the crap out of us the other night. So, <laughs> that's where we were coming from Saturday night. We were coming from the Lightning game. So, go ahead and check out the live show, the half YouTube. live show. Yeah. So we did a two part. We did. We did Friday in the car. Yes. And, and that was pushing it because we forgot, I for, honestly forgot we were going to do a live show because we knew Saturday was going to be pushing it big time. Right. Um, and so it was like, wow, is Rockford Fosgate amps any good? Rockford Fosgate amps are amazing. They make three lines, Prime, Punch, Power. Uh, Prime is a standalone line. They make Prime speakers, Prime mm -hmm. amps, Prime subwoofers. The amps, I would stick with the amps. James loves... The speaker, the four-inch speaker, the, really? the prime four-inch speaker is his go-to. I guess they have uh, the Subarus there. There's a lot of Subarus that take the prime four-inch. Okay. Uh, so that's his go-to. What's up, Sean? What's up, Big Red? That's his go-to four-inch is the prime because it has the tweeter that's recessed Sweden. inside of it. Yeah. Um, Hello, Alexander. So there are, there are a couple prime speakers that are really cool. Um, <laughs> And then Punch is, of course, the, the mainstream line. That's going to be like the yes. go-to, like, yeah, I, I can't afford that. Yeah, um, it's, it's better. G2s. Those yeah. are the power, which are the, hmm, wow, what were yeah. they thinking? Uh, and then there's many lines throughout each one. So there's, like, there's a there's a Optimus Punch, Prime. a Punch Mini. Yeah, <laughs> Optimus Prime. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a bunch. Rockford makes, their amps are, are typically, we right. love them. Yeah, All right. We do so. a ton of them. Dina say, hello, is there a rear view, rear view mirror that has a screen for a backup camera? Yeah. And mirroring for my phone, for my iPhone uh, 8. Okay. <laughs> so, for the most part, like this guy here, this is an Echo Master mirror replacement. So you take yeah. your mirror off, yeah. and in certain vehicles, this will replace it, and you get this cool little screen here for watching uh, the backup camera. Now, this has two video inputs. It has no audio input. So the problem with what you said, having your phone appear here for, like, Waze and stuff like that, it's not as easy as you would hope for. Hey, from right. Australia. So you have... Two things that need to happen. One, you need to get a video in here, and two, you need to get audio into the stereo. So you can use an iSimple Media Links that okay. is a HDMI to RCA output. So it's gonna have a red, yellow, and a white. Okay. So what you'd have to do is feed the yellow 
up into the mirror in the video too. Then you'd have to feed the red and white to a set of RCA to aux converters and then plug it into your factory aux jack for sound. And then you'd have to play aux on the radio and then flick the toggle switch to allow the mirror to display the phone Define. up here. Now, the thing to keep in mind is your iPhone 8 is like beyond 1080. This is 800 by 480. It's going to be blurry and not look that great because the phones are way sharper. Right. A better idea would be to, yes, put this in for a backup camera, but then get a cool magnetic mount to stick your phone on the dash and, and be do Waze or whatever navigation system I'm guessing you want to do that way. Yeah, like, what is the screen, like three inches? It's like 4.3 4. 4. inches. So This is bigger. That's, that's the dilemma. We get that question asked a lot, and it's just like, yeah, you could do it, but, yeah. you know, you're going to have... You know, just the cables alone, in the I mean, it's expensive. Not not going to tell you not to spend your money or how to spend your money, but I just don't. But that's how you do it. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. All right, Danny. Say, hey, Dean and Fernando. So I have a sound whining noise on my system, hmm. but it stops when I turn the car off. Naturally. That's I have a rock for uh, amp Which and one? the subs. Which um, rock for... Amp and sub? What's on the highs? Uh, let's see. And Rockford Fosgate um, for the mids and highs. And then Alpine CDA 9855. That's the deck. What's on the highs? Uh, Rockford. He don't tell me what model. So what Rockford do you have on the mids and highs is really the question. Um, things that cause engine noise. Uh, bad RCAs. Uh, a shorted out speaker somewhere. Um, sometimes, uh, if you run the RCAs and the power wire down the same side of the car, you can get noise. And I say sometimes because mm -hmm. we do it all the time and don't have this problem. Uh, depending on what series Rockford amplifier you have, some of them have differential inputs in that if the voltage doesn't match on the front and the rear input, the difference causes engine noise inside of the amplifier. You can test that by simply just plugging in one set of RCAs and flicking the two to four switch or the four, four to two switch mm -hmm. on the amplifier to where only a B channel has sound. Um, the other thing you could try too is pull your radio out, plug a set of RCAs in, drape them over to the amplifier, mm -hmm. see if it goes away. Uh, disconnect all but one speaker and see if you have noise in that one speaker. If you do, disconnect that speaker and try a different speaker. See if you have sound in that speaker. The other thing too is grounds. Make sure you have great grounds. If you have a digital multimeter, test the voltage at the battery, yep. then test the voltage at the amplifier. It's gonna be different, but it shouldn't be a volt or anything like that. So if you have 13.5 under the hood, you shouldn't have 12.5 in the back. You should have maybe 13, maybe 13.3 or 13.2 with the system on. Right. Because um, there is going to be a certain amount of degradation um, or loss. Okay. Loss. There. You have a certain amount of loss. <laughs> Sorry. Um, good grounds. Don't use seat bolts. Guy came in last week. Yeah. He's like, I have this 800.5 Kenwood. It's not working. Why? And we're like, I don't know. He's like, it was working fine. It stopped working. Put it on the bench. Turned on. Everything worked great. Went out to his car. Boom. Problem right there. Cartonic. He's got, he's got the uh, the seatbelt ground happening. And I'm like, dude, really? Mm -hmm. There you go. Fix that. Yeah. All good. Okay. So something to try. Go ahead. There you go. All right, Jorge. Say, uh, what's the best power sub amp, like an amp combo, uh, in your opinion? Trying to save space, but I love the bass. Um, as long as you're realistic about that, I would check out, like, we've done a ton of videos on the Rockford, and we have one standalone video on the Rockford P310 and 12. Mm -hmm. Check those out. I mean, we do, we do a ton of those, and as long as you're realistic with your expectations, you're going to enjoy it. Now, Kevin, the haircutter next door, we mm -hmm. put one on his Acura. He wasn't realistic with, in the, with his expectations, and what we ended up doing is ended up taking it out and just doing a single 12 and an amp to power it. Like, Kicker has the cool 112 with the comp R's and the comp C's yeah. uh, that are real tiny and small, and you can pick up, like, a Kicker CX whatever 301 that's, like, this big or a Kenwood Exelon, same thing, the 501, mm -hmm. they're tiny. You can almost bury those anywhere and get that premium power and go with a much better woofer. So if you put like that Kicker 300 in there on a Comp R, booyah, you're going to get tons yeah. of bass. So, you know, something to think about. All right. 
William, uh, what do you think about the Kicker uh, CS components, 6.9s? Uh, Kicker CS 6.9s are great if you're running deck power or like 30 watts. Anything past that, um, the crossover inside of it, it's a light bulb style crossover for DC, it just starts turning on and you can't get any volume out of them. So I would check out the new TSD Pioneers. They're about the same price uh, and you'll be much happier. Unless right. you're just running deck power, in which case they do sound great. All right, let's see. Uh, Carlos, question. Uh, have you had any issues with the SXSV16522 nav for 2009 Chrysler 300 causing the battery drains? Is the pack harness better? Okay, so, um, yeah, so I, I, get, I get what they're asking. So a lot of the smart harnesses, the way they work is that they don't actually go to sleep. Some of them will stay on and draw a low amount of current. So if like, for example, the Camaro kit. Yes. Uh, the Camaro kit, um, the problem that was happening is that when the car would go to sleep, eventually what would happen, it was kick out the AC controls in the kit. So the fix was to go back into the kit software and have it go into a low amperage dormant mode instead of actually going to sleep. Now when it does that, it draws point zero zero one or eight some extremely low amount of current so depending on the harness that you use some of them in order for them to function have to draw a certain amount of current yeah. general motors does it chrysler does it so what might be happening is that your particular harness is drawing more current than your car the amount of time you're letting your car sit now they intend it to work on it like you're going to drive your car every two to three days if it's dying every day then yes, you either have a bad harness or you just have a bad battery to begin with. Sometimes the cell in the battery will start to go bad and cause the same issue. So it's going to be one of those two things. All right, John. But we use pack, so. There you go. Yeah. Uh, ¿Qué tal, Felipe? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, let's see. Junior, say, I'm sorry, John. Australia, good day, <laughs> mate. I, ha I have looking at some of Thanks, the... Um, hand sized scopes on eBay okay. oh, yeah, for yeah. 30 to $100. Yes. Uh, should these be good to tune in my gear? Yeah, you know, it's funny you should mention that. We just picked up uh, the 89, okay, so like we have the expensive $500 or whatever the mm -hmm. hell it is. Um, and there was a, they were talking about cheap scopes, you know, what, what to buy, what to buy. And there is an $89 or $69 um, mm -hmm. inexpensive digital multimeter scope, and we bought one. Um, we're going to shoot a video on it here, sh hopefully after the holiday, yeah. but uh, I'm, I, I don't know yet. I'm not going to say go out and buy one. Go out and buy one. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, uh, it's blue with a gray screen. It's yeah. like 69 yeah. to 89 bucks. We bought one. We're going to test it out and run it through its ringers and see what it'll we do. We'll let you know. Uh, so yeah, we'll let you know. Stay tuned for that one. Yeah, we, I, I mean, I spent the money, so we got we to gotta make it work or, <laughs> you know. If worst comes to worst, we got a, another multimeter. There which you go. We got tons of those mm -hmm. now. We're buying those like every exactly. week. Exactly. So. Um, all right, Junior. Uh, what do you think of running electronic crossover versus the crossover on the AM? Planning to run in full active front and rear with dual electronic crossover? Yeah, that's an active mode. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, mm -hmm. the only... Okay, so full active... Electronic crossover, electronic crossover with dials, electronic crossover with magic box, like a DM608, DM810, Phoenix Gold, 808, whatever the heck it's called, a Bit One, all those guys, or just an old school audio control XS6. Um, if it gives you more control than your radio, then it's great, uh, especially if you're going to do active. Um, all the Pioneer radios have network mode, which allow you to do tweeter at 612, 18 dB or 24 dB crossovers yeah. with selectable points, a bandpass for the mid-range, there again, 612, 18, 24, and subwoofer, 612, 18, 24, with selectable points. Right. Um, the advantage of going with, let's say, uh, some form of, of EQ DSP crossover uh, is that you get more points. Uh, do they sound better? You know. A, technically, a, a, a an 80 hertz, 24 dB mm -hmm. Lynx, whatever, uh, I can never pronounce that right, slope should be, it doesn't matter if it's there or there. So, pick one and use it. That's the yeah. easiest way to say that. ¿Qué tal, Eric? ¿Cómo Cheers, estás? John. 
Uh, hola. Aloha. Why did they say hola? Aloha. Aloha, Eric. Okay. Um. Sorry. Louis, say, yes. hey, where do you get your hair shrink? With you, sh with the logo. Uh, try to find some sources, but I like okay. to some. Okay. Just call, go to www.wirecare.com mm -hmm. and there's a phone number. Give them a call. They're going to ask you to uh, email them a copy of your whatever logo you want. Um, you're going to want the three to one. You can just, if you call Wirecare, have yeah. them look up our account, which is Five Star Car Stereo, uh, and say, hey, look, I want what they got. Buy the bigger lots. I'll tell you right now, because I've been buying, I made the mistake of buying like hundreds or something, and then like it was silly. It was like for $2 more, I could double my order. I was like, why don't you guys ever tell me that? But yeah, wirecare.com, call them up. Just, and they pre cut it and everything. So, and they'll send you. Dave! Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Dave, congratulations, buddy, with the Rockford deal. I've been meaning to text you. Sorry I haven't. Good job, buddy. Nice. Um, remember the little guys when you get over there in January. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, we're here for you. Uh, and I answer the phone, as you know. Um, <laughs> So, anyways, wire care, they'll take care of you. Keep in mind, it has to be single color, really. And, and don't overcomplicate it, because it doesn't work all that well. All right, Carl say, my brother has a 2017 RAM, and it doesn't have the rear camera. Yeah. But does have the small screen. Yeah. I uh, need a mirror. A mirror? Where's the brand to get? Why do you need a mirror? It doesn't have the small screen? It doesn't. doesn't have the small screen. Okay, here you go, Echo Master. Part number on this guy is the but. 4320. However, what I would recommend doing is not putting this in the car. Uh, go ahead and pick yourself up like a Pioneer MVH uh -huh. 290. Uh, it is an in-dash AM FM touch, 6.2 inch touchscreen. They're inexpensive, they look nice, it's gonna be better than the factory radio. Uh, if you get into the pack interface for that, you can actually program. There's four buttons on the steering wheel, two left and right, and two up and down. You can mm -hmm. program the two up and down buttons to do volume up and down, answer the phone, end calls. So you'll get steering wheel controls added by just replacing the radio and not having to do anything else. And then add a backup camera. If you want to add, like we've done a bunch of videos yep. on the, the Echo Master uh, hitch cam or tailgate cam or the handle cam. Handle cam. There we handle go. Cam. Handle cam for those. So lots, lots to choose from. But Echo Master, EchoMaster.com is where you're going to want to head over. Yep. Next. All right. Um, have you guys heard? Thanks, Jason. You have a good night. And... Try not to beat the kids. <laughs> Just kidding. Parent-teacher conferences. God, I hated those. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you guys heard either Flip or Vi from Car Audio Gear? What? Flip. Flip or Vi? Fly, I'm sorry. Fly, Vi. Or Fly. Vi. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What are we talking about? Show Fly or Vi. Vibe? Mm-hmm. Vibe. Oh, yeah, Vibe. No. From Car Audio. No. no. No, I haven't heard either one of those. Uh, Car Tony is here. Oh, what's up? Uh, did you make the video on the Infinity car with the single 10? That's Sean. Um, I have no idea. Probably. I mean, Probably. when did we do that? Uh, we might not have, because that might have been... Was that the Monday we didn't? I don't remember. I, don't I remember. honestly don't remember. But Probably. I don't know. Maybe. Dude, we film everything. Yes. It, I have a 2009 Yugon. What's the best way... To mirror your phone on the factory radio okay so that's going to be the same issue as the previous question was asked how do i do the the screen Any, okay anytime you're dealing with let's say just a monitor in which case that is going to be a monitor um like pack audio makes the add-on backup camera interface for those which generally unlocks it to add a second oh, video yeah. input to add like a front camera, you can use that video input for anything. So in this case, you're gonna need one of those Pack Audio backup camera modules that's gonna allow you to add in like a front camera, and you're gonna put that on toggle switch. And you're gonna to toggle it over so that you get the, what's up Jeremy, thanks for joining. Uh, you're gonna get the image 
from the phone into that. Now how you get the phone into the image is up to the type of phone you have. So you're gonna need the i you're gonna need the i simple media links cable, mm -hmm. which there again is gonna RCA's okay to HDMI. You're gonna have to run the video into that, and then you're gonna have to do the same thing. You have to turn the um, RCAs to aux, plug it into your aux. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna have all these cables in this brain box behind the radio. It's gonna cost yep. four to five hundred dollars to, to mirror your phone onto the radio. Right. Um, can it be done? Yes. Is it silly? Yes. Hey fellas, I'm late to the party. You never late. The party never ends. <laughs> um, so yeah. yeah, you can do it and that's how you do it. It's just not gonna be easy. It's not like one cool box, plug this in, HDMI done. Right. All right, Jeremy, uh, I'm sorry. Jamie said, I chimed in last week about the K2 tweeters. Yeah. Being crossing over lower. Yeah, yeah. Return and no issue, thanks. Okay, cool. Yeah. Glad we could help. Uh, Fidel, you should, you should guys make a video showing how to ground an amp. It seems like a lot of people don't understand how important is the amp, like the ground amp. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, and it's funny when it comes to, okay, so like I've been grounding amps the same way for 27 years, uh -huh. okay? And, uh, you know, I'm up for anything. Like it, if something better comes along, like the Tessa tape, like the fast rings, like roadkill, like bigger this, ferals, Temflex, Loom, you name it. I, I'm on board. I, I want to try everything. And... The way I ground an amp, you know, a lot of people sit there and go, oh, that's that's wrong. Yeah. You, you can't ground an amp that way. And I'm like, really? Because I've been doing it for 27 years, and I don't have these issues. Um, I, I don't have issues where a wire gets loose. I don't have people coming back. I was at the last store for 21 years, so uh -huh. I would know if I was getting comebacks for that issue. We've been here. I've been working at this store for six years with no issues. So, Yeah. There's a million different ways to do it. There's one right. There's a couple different ways that are perfect. Um, but yeah, what we'll do is, uh, yeah, we'll slate that for early next year. We'll do a whole on what is common practices for grounds, do's and don'ts, just like we did on connectors, where it was like, yeah, like you can use these type of connectors. They'll all get you to the same place. Like Jason did a really nice video where he uh, was like, okay, here's a butt connector, here's a crimp cap, here's solder, and metered the wires. They all metered the same. He's like, you pick. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll work on that. Good idea. All right. Let's see. Hey, Bobby. Uh, James, I have a still system in my 2008 Mazda Speed 3 5x7 focal integration components front and 5x7 focal integration coaxials. Hmm. Uh, rear like powered by the amp. Yeah. Yeah, and the kicker 300x4 Ooh, Pioneer okay. shallow mount 10 and a custom 0.5 cube in the fiberglass uh cool. i like everything that's so it. far yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah nice yeah it was funny funny you should mention that car what was it was that friday that's nice, yeah was that friday yeah friday paul comes over at 5 15 he's like hey yes. i just need five four speakers real quick in a mazda 3. <laughs> uh he's got these giant punch series five by sevens he's and we're like the door was already off because the kid tried to do it himself yeah. and What's i'm like john I'm like, um, hey man, uh, these aren't just gonna screw in there. You realize that, right? You know, they need half inch spacers. So we had to make four half inch spacers real quick so we could get out of here on time. So I'm over in the router, routering out these half inch spacers. Fran was over there trying to screw these things in and get everything done. It was like, and then of course we were here till 6.45 because, hey, where was Paul though? Yeah. I got uh, a dip, I got, I, got, I got a thing <laughs> with the dude. And, and yeah, I was like, I, you do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, uh, all right, so Danny say, Hey, Dean, I know you are Apple fan like me. I need an, a lightning extension cable. Apple doesn't make one. On the website, any idea where I can find a certified male to female lightning extension cable? I'm installing the HDMI to the lightning, but I want to... I know what so he wants the to do. Adapter inside, yes. Okay, so here's the deal. There are no certified lightning extension adapters. There, there just isn't any. However, there is an uncertified one, and it does work. 
Um, I, I've, we've actually had them here a couple times. A couple customers have brought them in. I know a guy got it on eBay and another guy got it on Amazon. It's a lightning. It's white. It's about a meter. It's a female on one end, male on the other, and it does the trick. Uh, they did it for that same reason. They wanted to put the Apple Lightning HDMI adapter down and mount it behind the center console and it just have the one wire coming up. Um, and it worked. Uh, and, well, we haven't done one in probably a year. But, yes. Uh, yeah, so there is the uncertified one. And it's, I don't know, 10 or 15 bucks maybe. I'd give it a try. Yeah. It worked for us last time we used it. Uh, David, who was the lady on the video, on today's video? Uh, that was my mom. There you go. That was mom. Mom came by, wanted to say hi. She comes by every couple weeks, or every, yeah, every couple weeks. She's by today. It's kind of yeah, nice, yeah. with her eye patch on. Yeah. But yeah, she's, yeah. she's so sweet, yeah. Hi from Detroit! Yes, uh, Fidea, Rockford versus Pioneer Speakers. Okay. Um, I take Rockford. Uh, two totally different animals, really two totally different apples. Uh, animals. Um, Rockford is apples. Two totally different apples. One is a Granny Smith, and the other one is a Golden Delicious. Um, <laughs> okay. So, if you like loud, in your face, in your face, um, that's Rockford. All their speakers are loud. That's why we do them in the Jeeps. That's why you guys always see these Rockfords in the Jeeps. Hey, Steve. Because it's a Jeep. It's going to be loud. And it's it's there's a lot of road noise. And Rockford just powers right through that. If you're in a car that is a little bit more quiet, you might want to look at like the TSDs or the new Z series Pioneers because they're going to give you a much more enjoyable uh, music experience. If you want that, now if you just want, like I said, in your face, then go Rockford. On the RP4 or TY11, uh, I, I, I missed that. Okay, keep going. All I'm right, so, all right. so Felipe say, okay, I have a 4 8 Rock 4 P2s with a T1500 okay, Rock 4 under my rear seat on my Nissan Titan. Right now, it's a sealed box. Do you think if you uh, it will be sound better if you I uh, make a porter? Where is it at? Nissan Titan under the seat. Ooh, four eights. Four eights. Four eights. B twos. Um, the problem is, is it, are are you gonna have enough room to port them? Because, I mean, yeah, if you can get the right airspace and port it, it will always sound better. Okay, so Jeremy was answering another guy's question. Okay, okay. So carry. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, Jeremy works for PAX. So those of you guys that are just curious how Jeremy would know this. He's pack tech support, so don't mean to call him out, but that's that's what he does. He's the guy we call when we're like, hey, man, these instructions are backwards. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if he's telling you something about a pack product, do it. Um, yeah. Okay, so. Yes. Four if eights. you have room for a ported enclosure, a ported enclosure is always going to sound more punchy, more boomy, more deep. So, yes. Uh, do you, The question I always ask is, do you have polyfill in the box? Um, you may want to put some polyfill in there before you go ahead and tear it all apart and, and, and build a new box. Maybe just by adding a little polyfill in there, you might actually get that boomier sound that you're looking for. So give that a shot. If you've already got polyfill in it, then tear it apart, build a port box. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so Adam, I have a AVHX 2700BS Pioneer. Okay. My light green wire it was grounded, but no picture. Correct. When I drive, so I had to send it back, get a fix from freezing it. So okay. before it was working with just ground it. Yes. Do you need a bypass for it? Okay, so here's the thing with the, the emergency brake wire on the Pioneers. If you take the radio when you first purchase it and you go tap, tap, ground, okay, and it, the battery never gets disconnected or it has to sit for a long period of time with the battery disconnected, you can get video out of the radio. It will, it will play discs. However, yeah. it will not give you access to any of the menus because the menus, or there again, if it sits for a long period of time or the processor gets reset, it's going to erase that and you have to go tap, tap, ground. Um, it's an on, off, on sequence every time. Yeah. Whether, whether you, you know... You can ground it, like I said, if it was tap, tap, ground, it, which is usually ignition, you know, and it'll ground itself enough to where it will work the first time. Yeah. After that, it's anyone's guess. 
Do we recommend you always add a bypass? Yes, to unlock the menu systems. Like, I, you know, everyone will want to reset them. How do I do reset? My reset is grayed out. I have my emergency brake wire grounded. Well, it's grounded, but it's not doing the on off on when you turn on the ignition to unlock those features. So yeah, I guess the answer to the question would be buy the micro bypass or put on a toggle switch and just go on off on. You know, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, Greg said, do you guys know anything about those loud? So Sean Frederick, that's a big red up there. If yep. uh, you need to give him a call, that is Bright Star. Just do a Google search for Bright Star Car Audio. They're a box manufacturer here locally. Um, they build these, that box. That, the, that's an F-250 box that we have built for us from them. Yeah, okay, that one. Anyways, we also, anytime we need a custom box built, any shape truck boxes or stuff like that, mm -hmm. we give them a call and they deliver. Thank you, right. Sean. Yep, Okay. thank you, Sean. Uh, Greg, do you know anything about those loud, those, uh, boom boxes? Are they been, um, for like a 600 to a thousand bucks? They are like a retro ghetto blaster. Oh, he's talking about diamond boxes. Uh, he's gotta be I'm talking guessing, about diamond boxes. Yeah. That's the Diamores diamond boxes. But that's expensive. Oh, dude, yes, they're awesome. Yes. That's, uh, okay, so Diamore is SM... Okay, when you buy a DD1, yeah. that's the guy that that makes those. So he makes his second business outside of um, yeah. outside of building the DD1s and all the SMD tools and the cool meters and all that. Mm -hmm. Is he builds diamond boxes? Correct. He just came out with a desktop diamond box. Mm -hmm. So the, did you see that yeah, one? The little yeah, one? Oh, yeah. I was so tempted to buy it. I like the big one. Like, I know I like, like the big one. I just I, uh, big one is maybe, better. Maybe next year. Maybe next year I'll get yeah. you one, buddy. Um, but yeah, so no, they are impressive. Okay, all right. If you ever want to feel like you, you can point to the smartest guy in the room, he's the guy. Oh, like yeah. I've been, in, I've been in a seminar where he was the guest speaker, and uh, I've never had a room so quiet in my life of a whole bunch of car stereo guys just like this. What? I mean, I'm trying to take notes, and I'm like, fuck it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, screw it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> too late. Sorry, my bad, kids. Sorry. Sorry, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the guy is a genius, he, and he knows his stuff, so if he's building a product and you want the best, that's the guy you buy it from. All right. I mean, the DD1, yeah, I, mean, yeah. first, I mean, geez. Okay. All right, so, Louis, hey, Flea, Flea and Buy are chapter brands. It was uh, marketing by Metra. Oh, okay. Fly was uh, comparable to the, the SSL, yeah, Soundstorm. Vibe was like a... Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Lancer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, Vibe. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Oh, really? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> okay, go ahead. There you go. Uh, Dustin. Do we sell empty comp bar boxes? Yes, Paul will sell anything. He will literally pull a pair of subs out and sell you the box. Okay, so uh, Dustin say, have you all installed any Alpine Restyle kits? I did uh, I-207. <laughs> The Wrangler and yeah. the other day it was pretty nice, but I don't like what? I don't like what that like? you have to use the part break to access the settings. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so actually on the restyle stuff, you, you can do a micro bypass. You don't have to use the emergency brake. You can cut the harness open and, and grab out the emergency brake wire and put in a micro bypass. Um, we do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, have we installed them? Yes, we have installed them. Um, my biggest complaint on them is that even though for as much money as you pay for them, they should fit and finish, go right in, and they don't. You always have to sit there and play with them, and uh, it drives me crazy. Um, but yeah, no, we, we, we put them in. I mean, we, um, Jesus. Uh, hey, they over there. There's a oh, shelf over there. there. We over have there. every yes. one of them. Every lined up one every of one of them yeah. is, is over there so yeah we stock them all yeah well it's right there is the display oh yeah there's, there it is right there yeah. Yay. Yay. all right so brian uh i was thinking about doing the big three yes but i want to start with the grounds first yes and we'll probably delay the power cable yes. on the alternator that's perfectly acceptable um yeah honestly so, Luis, most of the time that's what we do when we're concerned about that is we concentrate on the grounds um that power cable from the alternator to the battery in some cars mm -hmm. it's impossible uh or it's just almost impossible we'll say that it's not worth doing 
But the grounds, yeah, oh, dude, ground the hell out of it. Uh, sh yeah, I usually like to go from the battery to the frame, from the frame to the block, from the block back to the battery, mm -hmm. and that little trifecta. And then if I'm really feeling silly, I'll go from the frame to the block, too. Um, it just depends on how many points I have and, and whatnot. But, yeah, if we ever have an issue with the car that needs all that, a lot of the times it's the older cars, you know, the... 90 to 2,000 cars that are just, and there again, some of the new cars, the, the power, wire, the ground wires suck too, so, you know. All right, so, Gary say, hello guys, do you guys sell the Pioneer Micro Bypass? Yeah, yeah, um, but the easiest place to get is either go to eBay or to Amazon and pick up the Micro Bypass. If you're local, just give Or if Paul you're local, give Paul a call. Yeah, that's it. John say, hey guys, um, it was a lot of creepy people Saturday night. Oh, it got it got really creepy. It kind of freaked Cl Clarissa out, man. She was oh, really? kind of like she wasn't expecting that. I wasn't yeah. either. I, I mean, I, I kind of figured it would kind of like take a, and um, so once it started to get creepy, it was like, all right. Uh, and who said that, John? Was that yeah, it's John. Yeah, Don't and worry. he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm with you. We're done. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Everyone have a great night. Um, so yeah, that got weird. Thank, All right. That's the one nice thing. You know, we complain that we can't keep the, the comments like this in the video, but it's a good thing on YouTube you can't. Yeah. Because I, it's just, whoa. <laughs> Anthony, what's going on, buddy? Thank you. Okay. Keep going. Uh, Carrie, say, hey, guys, great videos and information. I have a 2015 uh, Sonata Hybrid. I tried to update the firmware update on the Pack RP4. Oh no, two. that's uh, go ahead. I think Jeremy answered all that. Okay, so, yeah, Jeremy okay. answered that for Okay, now. cool. Okay, all so. right. Um, do you guys get a list of the best selling car audio equipment that comes every year? Um, no, we, we don't get a list of the best selling car audio equipment. Um, every now and then they'll do quarterly reports and they'll get published, and, and you know, everyone, if they're real special, they'll toot their own horn. Other than that, no. Uh, we are going to do, at the end of the year, we're going to do our top five that we f feel are our favorites. So it's going to be totally biased and geared around the products that we install. So, but hey. There you go. I uh, can say, how are this car ZVX subwoofers? Are they musical or are they ex strictly just Strictly SPL? just bah! <laughs> the musical one is going to be the DDX. The DDX is going to be more of the, uh, hey, what's your favorite system of all time? All right, I'm going to think about that one, James. Okay, LV. LV, hi from Golden Corral, Ocala. Hey. Nice, man. Thank you. Uh, James, that's why I use the... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, he was just commenting when I said okay. the 4-inch, he liked the Prime. He said the 4-inch uh, Prime sound. He can get those things to pound like 6s. Call me to build the box. I got yes. all that. Keep all going. right, Ernie, say hey guys. Christian, are tweeters supposed to be loud? Tweeters are supposed to be loud. Yes. Now that was a good question. I saw that pop up, and I've been thinking. Okay, so here's the thing: when a tweeter blows, a lot of the time it will blow and melt the voice coil in a fixed position, and then what you're going to get out of it is. <laughs> I'm like what? <laughs> You get a little, you can still hear sound come out of it, but you, you can barely hear it. Tweeters should make your ears hurt just like a mid-range. So they should actually be the loudest of the two. Meaning when you put your ear next to a tweeter and you turn the radio up, you should immediately, your ears should start to ring. It doesn't matter whose tweeter it is, they should all do that. Yeah. So if your tweeters aren't doing that, you got a problem. Yep. Yep. Uh, hey guys from California. Hey. Isaac. Um, what? You suck? Isaac, Isaac. Oh, I thought you said you suck. <laughs> Isaac. What's wrong with you? Isaac. Isaac. Okay. okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Please. Ah. All right. Andrew, say, what car audio YouTubers do you follow? Um, uh, all of them. I got to be honest with you. I think I follow all of them. Um, 
James here, I, uh, you know, I follow James, uh, which is Car Out, etc. I follow Old School Car Stereo, Derek. I yeah. follow Steve, um, Mead. Steve Mead. I follow uh, 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 Sal Man. Yes, um, Cardio Fabricator. Fabricator. Um, um, Jason, Jason at uh, uh, Stereo Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, EXO. Yes. Love that guy. He's hilarious. Uh, um, over there in Canada. Um, uh, can I follow the Canadians. Um, uh, the Canadians. Gatlin <laughs> and uh, Damien. <laughs> And yeah, Carphonics. Um, all of them. All of them. That's it. I, I follow Quality Mobile Video. Uh, I, it, it, honestly, I try to follow them all. I just, you know, and, and I try to, to keep up with as much of them as I can just because I like to see what they're doing, to know what we're doing, so that, you know, it's, it's like homework. Um, and plus, they're fun guys to talk. A lot of them that we've we've made friendships with, they're fun guys to talk to. So, and and it's it's I think it's great because like you know James is on here from Cardio Fabricators. You guys should go subscribe to his channel. But being able to interact with him, he's in New Zealand. I mean, yeah. dudes. I mean, we're talking to a guy, and, and there's a lot of Australia guys here, and it's all over the country. It's all over the world. It's a great community that we can all. This is a great place that you guys have all come to, and. It's just fun, and we all get to share our love for um, car audio. Yeah, I think that's I think that's how. It's Check out uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Schaffer. Um, oh, yes. and I also follow um, uh, down yes. down for sound. Yeah, 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 Matt down Schaffer. for sound. Yeah, yeah, he's okay. always uh, yeah. All right, uh, say hi to Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Thank you for watching, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, Martin, uh, Dean, can a Prime five hundred point one handle? Uh, the 5 volt preamp output uh, voltage using the epicenter? Yeah, why couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, dude, a Prime 501, uh, if, if you've watched the show, we do a ton of them, and we've put them in just about every application imaginable. So, yeah, rock on. Yeah. Keep uh, the gains low. I mean, be smart. Keep the game, keep the game where it needs to be. All right, what is your favorite, uh, James? Yeah, he uh, asked uh, that question. What was what my favorite, favorite system of all time? Um, it's probably going to be one of my own. Uh, if I was to look back at all the systems I've built, yeah. um, I had a uh, 1983 Renault Encore that I built a full Orion SX and Morel system in. Mm -hmm. So it consisted of three Orion 222 SXs. Oh, it was six amps. So four Orion 222 SXs, a 250 and a 2150, uh, 2125 SX. Um, there was a set of Morel, two sets of Morel tweeters, two sets of Morel mid bass, or a set of Morel um, mid range. Uh, it was full active. Uh, there was a set of Morel coaxials yeah. in the back. Um, this is back when Morel all had three inch voice coils on everything. Um, and then there was one ten and a band pass in the very back. I gotta see if I can dig out pictures of this thing. It was awesome. Tregillis and I built it. Um, but that was, that was, and it had neon, and it was red, and it was plexi, and we had a great time building it, and, um, that was, uh, I had it for about six months, and then the, uh, the car needed to be get rid, to get rid of the car. <laughs> so I sold most of it, and I, I, I it was so sad, but it was, yeah, it had an Orion EQ in it, um, had an Alpine 7909 player in it, yep. I believe. That might have been a Clarion, no, yeah, no, that was an Alpine. It, might, it was either that or a Clarion, because we were big Clarion dealers at the time. Um, but yeah, yeah, that system, that was crazy. Now, I've built tons, as you know, in you two, I've built tons and tons of systems since then. Um, and But that was mine, and, and that to me was like, to be able to drive around in that, yeah, that was fun. All right, Tone Trudge, say, hey, guys, what's up from Chicago? Here, finally got to watch you guys live. It's been a while. Cool, thank you, thank man. Thank you, man. Uh, James, Pioneer Shallow Mountain versus the Kick and Comp RT. Comp RT. All right. Uh, Jared, from hi from Tallahassee. Hey. There you go. Local. Uh, which do you think sound better, the new Alpine R series six and a half or the Hertz High Energy six and a half? I have a Rockford Punch P one thousand five power in them. Two totally different sounds. Um, two totally different sounds. The high energy are there again, like when we were talking about Rockford, we're talking about loud and in your face. Mm -hmm. The high energy are loud and in your face, and they also have a little bit of 
wine associated. I mean, not wine like, Wah. I mean, like, you know, we, we like to refer to speakers as beer and wine, or beer and cheese, or, or wine and crackers. Um, and the, the high energy has the ability to get stupid, stupid loud, but yeah. sound, they don't fall apart when they're loud. A lot of speakers will fall apart when they're loud. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, yeah, ooh, yeah, it's awesome. Sounds amazing. They're great sounding speakers. Our type are more mellow. Um, and our type I like to think of as a nice white blank canvas yep. if you're a painter. Um, it allows you to push the sound whichever way you want. You can take that R type tweeter and you can make it bright if you want, or you can keep it mellow if you want. The um, the high energy doesn't give you that option. It's just gonna be just bright. Loud. Um, yeah. Just loud. But sound great. So yeah. um, oh yeah, they both the mid bass is amazing. Like I said, they're mm. two amazing speakers, so you're not losing anything by going with one or the other. You know, if you put rogue kill and fast rings and all that stuff on these things, you're gonna get tremendous bass out of them. You know, that was, the high energy was the first high-end speaker you ever heard. Yeah. You know, we did a Prius and mm -hmm. uh, puts the six inch components in the front doors of that and the two inch up in the dash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, up until then, you'd never heard anything like that. And you were just really? sitting there going, and I'm like, dude, the sub's not even on. Yeah, so that was amazing. You know, yeah, yeah they're they're You know, great. one of my favorites, I guess, uh, builds that was the the Toyota. Which one? The Toyota Tundra with the K twos. Oh, Max, uh, uh, Max's dad. I guess yes. Yeah. Yes, that was amazing, man. That was like uh, way. Yeah. Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Gators. Go Gators. Yeah. Um, That's it. Joe. Joe's Joe. Joe. Exactly. Joe's friend. Yeah. Joe's a customer of mine that I've known since way back when and he drove he drives four hours to come here and have us work on his trucks and we did his son's uh toyota phone runner that made it into a video we didn't film his because he literally showed up at 9 30 a.m and didn't leave until 10 30 p.m that same day and we did a nice uh he had the jbl system in there and his toyota tundra we did a um lcq1 we did two pdx amplifiers we did K2s up front, K2 coaxials in the rear. Yeah. We did a punch P312 behind the back seat, um, tuned the whole thing. And it was the first time he calls me the next morning. And he's like, it was the first set of the new K2s. We'd just literally become a Focal dealer. Yeah. And we hadn't sold any, and I hadn't heard them in probably. And he calls me the next morning, and he was like, he goes, man, I got to tell you. He goes, when I left there, I was feeling kind of skeptical about how good those things sounded. They sounded okay. He goes, by the time I got home four hours later, he goes, I got in the truck this morning. And I was like, this ain't the same system as when I went to bed last <laughs> night. This thing sounds awesome. And, yeah, uh, yeah so. Yeah, well, that's one of my favorites, yeah. That was nerve-wracking, though, because um, we hadn't done them. I hadn't done K2s in so long. I forgot you needed to break them in. Right. So you remember we were tuning yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. It was like nine o'clock at night. I was I was surprised. It. I'm like, dude, and, no, and I'm like, I this is sounding that. so yeah. shitty. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? I this was is, like, dude, yeah, are you, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> looking at me. Like, you know, we're, like, we're, we're both smiling, going, oh yeah, you know, we're turning dials and going, oh, there's something wrong. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, but we luckily we tuned it for like an hour. So by the time we got, we were playing it like breaking them in and by mm -hmm. by the time we got done with it it was like oh yeah we got this now <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so yeah that was that was scary all right so james say um hey one of the suppliers has polk polk audio are you any good i haven't done anything with them before so do you do you did polk audio before uh i've never done polk audio no I'm trying to... What do you think? What is this What is this Andrew character saying here? Uh, Andrew, James hey, James. James sucks. You can't get it. Dude, no. Uh, uh, I'm hoping you're joking, because that's there's no place for that. The speakers are awesome. Uh, you know. Hey, James. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but that doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping he's kidding. Okay, so go on. Okay. Uh, uh let's see. Um... Martin say thanks. Uh, I wasn't sure because I say uh, okay. What do we got? Um, thanks sure because it says up to four volt, four volt pre out on the, the prime amps 
As always, you guys are great. Okay, yeah, so he was just asking about the 4-volt input. Yeah. Aussies. Okay. Aussies. All right, yeah. gotcha. So it's like, okay, so it's an internal squabble. Okay, just oh, making okay. sure. Yeah. All good, guys. Let's let's keep it clean. Yeah. If you want to get angry, get out of the... Everything in love in here. Get, get it out on the soccer field, and then you all can, you know... Ow, ow, ow. Red card, red card. Okay. I'm, they got to do soccer. I mean, they do soccer? I mean, it's either soccer or hockey. Pick one. I don't know. You have to ask James. Okay, go on, go on. Uh, all right. Uh, Polk has made some decent products. We have Stereo Kings. Ha oh, we have Stereo Kings. Anthony. Yeah, Anthony works at Stereo Kings. There you go. Okay, another guy from Stereo Kings. What's up, Anthony? I uh, haven't sold them in years, though. Um, okay, so to answer the question about Polk, we do actually carry the DB series Polk speakers. Yes. And the only reason why we carry them is because they're m m marine ish. And uh, they make a six by nine, a five and a quarter, and a six and a half. So we get a lot of guys that want them for that. Other than, you know, they put them in motorcycles and stuff like that. So really, that's all we do with Polk. Okay. All right. And the... Uh, Ooh, Polk is owned by Viper now. Or DEI yeah. still owns them, yeah. Hmm. I think that's the only audio company they own. Because when Goofy with Fancy Shoes comes by, he was complaining that he wanted to work for them. All right. So Edwin said in the VRC, the FRS... Yeah. Should I use the LC2i to add a sub to the factory radio or should I replace the radio and speakers? The car is really tiny and the back seat can't hold anything. Um, I mean, that's going to be up to you as far as, you know, what you want to do. Uh, I, I'm an avid fan of anything that has Toyota on, Toyota on the name. Mm -hmm. You need to get that radio out of there because typically Toyota's audio Tom sucks. Marcus. So if you're really interested in making it sound amazing, then definitely replace the radio. You will be happier. Otherwise, yeah, go for, uh, yeah, the LCQ1. The LCQ1 will allow you to at least fix it as best that you can. Uh, I got a second air alternator and a Mercury Karma Care. No, I haven't put a second one in. I, uh, the few times I've put a new one in has never been a good experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm not an alternator guy. I always say, hey, let me introduce you to our friend, the mechanic over here, and uh, he'll take care of you. All right. What do we uh, got? Jared, hey guys. I, I like to replace the four 5x7 speakers in my 2007 F150. What do you recommend? Um, 5x7s, uh, like we said, we've talked about punch a lot tonight. They make a great 5x7. They also make a 6x8. Um, if you want, uh, honestly, you might want to check out the Kenwood Exelon 5x7s. They will be a little bit easier to install in that particular vehicle. So, yeah, check that one out. Um, and then yeah. we talked about Hertz, too. They make yeah. the Dici. If you're, if you're trying to get something that is, like, inexpensive but loud, the Dici is a really nice alternative to that. Yeah. But right there in the middle, I would check out your Cameron Exelon. We it. up to date? That's it. Hey, Sue. Yeah. Um, hey, guys. What is the Q factor and how do you adjust it? I have DSR1, Rockford. Okay, real quick, Q factor. The, okay, try to conceptualize this. We'll make it real quick. I'll try to make it quick. Okay, so... When you have a point of sound, so if you're if, if he's 20,000 hertz and I'm 20 hertz, we're going to pick a number somewhere in between there. And let's say we pick 100 hertz. Okay, now when you lift up the string, okay, if there was a string here and a string there and I lifted this up, you'd have a string that goes up like this and down like that. Unfortunately, yeah. that's not how an EQ works. When you lift up the one frequency, it will lift up between a certain point and come up like a little thin triangle. So what it does is when you adjust 100 hertz, it's going to adjust 80, it's going to adjust 70, it's going to adjust 60, and on the other side, it's going to do the same thing. Now, what the Q factor does is adjust that width of how much it's going to adjust those other frequencies. So, for example, if you have a narrow Q, it's just that. It's narrow. It's two points. They're close together, and you're bringing up the one point in the center. So you have a very narrow triangle, meaning it's not, you know, if you're adjusting 100 hertz, it may not actually affect let's say 200 hertz, or the opposite direction. If you have a wide Q, what that's gonna do is it's going to affect, a, it's gonna make a bigger triangle, which means it's going to affect more frequencies to the left and right of your center frequency. Where this becomes cool is, let's say you're adjusting the subwoofer portion of the Q, and you pick like 80 hertz, and your base is dry. When you adjust the Q wide, it's going to 
affect a lot more of those frequencies, thus making the bass boomy. On the opposite side of the coin, if you adjust the cue for the tweeter, and the tweeter is sounding a lot of if you adjust the cue more narrow, it's going to take away that sound. So it's best described as dry or boomy on the cue is how I like to explain it to people. That's my, you know, the way I look at it. Um, so hope that helped. It's a bit crazy, I know. Uh, fixed response, I have Rockford P's 175 S's, and now uh, they're bright for me. And they are bright for me. I think I'll end up going with the new Type R series. There you go. Awesome. You go. All right, Martin. Uh, okay. Best results. Pour it, seal. Uh, use, pour it or seal using the epicenter. Uh, I really don't think it matters. I no. mean, uh, pour it is always going to be boomier than sealed. That's oh, that's just this water. Hola, must, Roberto. Como water estás? This water has in it. Anyways, pour it is always going to be more boomy than sealed. Yeah. And... Um, epicenter is designed to, as a, the whole idea behind the epicenter is it's a harmonic restoration device. It's designed to add in boom where boom does not exist. So if you're listening to something like Van Halen, it has a da 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 and you want it to go blah 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 You know, the epicenter does that. But um, whether it's ported or sealed, it really doesn't matter. Every time we use one, it's on a ported box. What did James just say? Uh, let's see, oh, Jim say, hey Dean, uh, some of my viewers have been me telling, have been telling me that Pioneer and Alpine time corrections didn't done in, uh, opposite ways. Pioneer, you put the exact distance from you yes. to the speaker, and with Alpine, you have to put yes. the amount okay. to I want to correct, which is the, correct. yes, yeah. Yes. So, all right, so James brought up an interesting point, um, and we'll end on that. Uh, when you're setting up time correction in a current Pioneer and an older Alpine, supposedly Alpine has fixed that in the newer <coughs> units, James, um, you literally just take a tape measure and go here, you take a tape measure and go there, you and, and you do that, and you put those numbers into the Pioneer radio, and you're done. Alpine, you have to do crazy math. If you open, if you download the owner's manual for an Alpine, there is a conversion chart that allows you to take the number that you just made and then convert it over into this other number, and then you take that number and you put it into the time correction. If you try to do this, it doesn't work because it's wrong, and plus there's a bubble that you can only make each speaker so far from the center point and it's basically a headache. And when I was talking to Alpine about that, and they were like, ah, yeah, we know. And I was like, oh, come on, really? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, when, when time correction on Alpine, download the owner's manual. There's a whole section in the owner's manual that talks about how to set up time correction in there. It's ridiculous. Uh, the nice thing is with the new TuneIt app, you don't have to do that. So if it takes a TuneIt app, you just measure it and you're done. It's the old stuff that sucked. Right. Um, all right, so. All right. Uh, ah, saludos a Ricardo uh, to Puerto Rico. Cool, use the speaker pro. All right, cool, man. Hey, guys, this has been fun. We hope you had a good time. We'll see you again on Saturday. Yeah, we should, uh, what's Saturday? Uh, Saturday. Saturday, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you again on Saturday at mm -hmm. some point um, for the Saturday show on the YouTubes. You guys enjoy the week. Be safe, be fun. Oh, before I forget, Thursday. Morning, we're doing a live show. Yes. YouTube live Thursday morning for Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Uh, so we will be there. Uh, it's going to be fun. You guys are going to like it. You're going to want to tune in. So check us out Thursday morning. Bye, Jerry. You're going to like this, all you guys up north. I got a special place we're going to go and do it from. We're not going to do it here at the store. It's going to be me and Fernando. So mm -hmm. stay tuned Thursday morning, right. guys. Otherwise, you guys, you guys have a great later. night. Thank you. Bye.